Welcome back. It is almost quarter to nine. Now, according to the writer, this is a play about memory, magic, and uh, the now as well as about history erupts and disrupts the present. That's multiple award-winning writer Nadia David's first new play on African soil in nine years, titled What Remains, running from the 6th to the 12th of July at Heading Hall, Orange Street in Cape Town, following its run in Grahamstown at the Graham College from the 29th of June to the 1st of July. It stars Denise Newman and is directed by curator, choreographer Jay Pether. And to tell us more, we're joined from our Seapoint studios in Cape Town by Denise Newman, the lead actor of What Remains. A very good morning to you, Enise. Thank you so much for joining us on Morning Live. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Indeed. Indeed, it's a pleasure. Now, give us a brief synopsis of what, uh, of what the film What Remains is all about and what was the inspiration behind it? Well, it's a story, as you were saying, about memory. And I think Nadia David's the writer when, when she set it in 2003 when a mass grave a burial site was uncovered in, in the, the Greenpoint area in Prestwick Street. Mm. And what happened was they were excavating to, to build up a mall and, and a hotel. I mean, Cape Town is this booming city where, where uh, capitalism is, is, is thriving. And they uncovered, the bulldozer hit the first bone. And by the end of the, the dig, they had uncovered almost 3,000 um, skeletons in that site from young children as young as six months old b buried with their, with their mothers um, to older, older men in their, in their late 60s. So 3,000 bones, that's a huge amount of bodies. So it was a mass, a mass burial site and predominantly, um, you know, slaves of the area. And, and that was when the archaeologists came in to, to, um, yeah. to uh, you know, discover what this, where they come from and, and their history. Um, but the people who live in the city, the people, the character that I play, for example, is the healer who senses this. He lives with these spirits, these, these ghosts all the time. And when that first dig happens, she realizes that something has been un unleashed because mm. there were all of these spirits coming towards her. And, and so she goes to the site and she and the, the, the archaeologist have an interaction. And then it also brings in the youth voice because we, all of us, you know, descendants of slaves, everybody has a genetic memory that's locked inside them. And some people have more access to it, and some people just um, push it aside and focus on, on science rather than the spirit world and, and the things that we can't explain, yeah. that we can't um, give a definite answer for. So what, what we have is, is this, this discussion about a history mm. that has been forgotten, even though it's somewhere in all of our memories, and then the young voice comes in and says, but, you know, maybe what we should do, the student comes in and what we should do is we should, we should, we should acknowledge these people. We should fight to reclaim our rightful place Anise, in society. Anise, as you are narrating, I get the feeling that this is a, a hair-raising, a nail-biting and a cringe-worthy plot. <laughs> how, how, how do you relate to the ma main character, per se? Well, um... It's, it's more an ensemble piece, I must just say. I'm not the main character. We, we're equally important in the story. Um, I play the healer. There's also the archaeologist, the student, and the dancer who represents the spirit world, the, the ghosts of the past. Um, and, and I think we equally carry the story among us. Mm. And then we have the character of the chairperson who represents big capital and development. Mm. You know, so, so what we do is, is we, we balance the story between, between the four of us. But my passion for it is that there's been, there's this untold history. And as Nadia writes, there's this, why didn't I know the story, yeah. history that, that has been forgotten and not been captured and reported so enough i mean there are the historians but our, our students in school our, the pupils in school are not learning about the slave woman who who, who smuggled the soap she hid it in a duke and smuggled it to the runaways who lived all the way up the mountain you know they they also the the, the 
the twin girls and, and the amulets that they wore around their necks to protect them, but that didn't really protect them. Yeah. You know, and then they, why they the decision then to fuse text, uh, dance and movement to tell this story? Well, to, to make it not a naturalistic play, it's not a naturalistic play. It uh -huh. deals with things that are, are, um, are different. So to make it more accessible, you, you set it in, in, an, in another realm, in, an, in a, um, a more um, heightened state. And, and that is why, and, and I think Jay Pather has been brilliant at, at fusing the movement to represent a mm. thousand, two thousand, three thousand spirits, you know, there might be more of them. We're only representing about a thousand of them in our story. And you also <laughs> mentioned uh, the four figures in your narration. That is the archaeologist, the healer, the dancer and the student. And they all have uh, something in common. What is it that they have in common and what actually makes their journey uh, and movements unique? I, I think what the, they're all searching for something. They, um, you know, the, the archaeologist, for example, is searching through science to uncover the truth, whereas the, the healer knows instinctively that, that um, we have to, we have to honour these people and we have to bury them and honour the site as a grave site and, and not build a great big mall. And they, but then, of course, it's in prime real estate where you, your uh, chairwoman and, and big Capital says, no, we can't keep this burial site. We have to build, you know, a hotel and a shopping mall and, and, and because it's, it's good for the economy. And then the student voice, which is a very important voice, mm. comes and says, we are tired of our histories being suppressed and our, our voices not being heard. And they come with, we must, um, we mu you know, that fallist movement, get... We must do away with the things that are only colonialism and we must incorporate things that, that we remember from our past, which is about the slave history, is about all those people who, who built this city that, that we right. live in. Even though the, the, the story is located here, it can be a city anywhere in the world that has its, its past and its present so you know what, and he's, we haven't got much time, unfortunately. We and can go evident. all day, and I must say that <laughs> well done, well done in captivating us and actually making us look forward to see this film. It is a definite it's, must see. It's, eh? it's a play. It's a it's a theatre piece. Yeah, yeah. All right, but then nevertheless, thank you so much for chatting to us this morning. Thank. You. Thank you, Simpiwe. Indeed, that is a multiple award-winning writer, Nadia David, speaking to us about uh, her first new play on African soul in nine years, titled What Remains, which will be performed from the 6th to the 12th of July at Heading Hall, Orange Street in Cape Town, following its run in Grahamstown at the Graham College from the 29th of June to the 1st of July. Morning Life takes a break and we'll be back shortly after this.